Hi everyone and welcome to Germany for student channel. Today is lesson number 26 of a two level of German language course and we are continuing the topic of relative ZC. In today's lesson we are going to cover the topic of accusative. We'll see the sentence structure and we'll see the examples. So let's start the lesson. Uh, first we have to know that for every relative sentence we need a relative pronoun and the relative sentence always starts with a relative pronoun. This is something that we have learned in the previous lesson. Now what are the relative pronouns? Uh, relative pronouns are the definite articles uh, that we have learned in A1 level of German language course. Um, so today because the focus is accusative case so we will see what are the relative pronouns in case of accusative. Uh, if the noun is masculine then the definite article is den in accusative case and this definite article will be used as a relative pronoun when we want to use uh, in the relative sentences. If the noun is feminine, then the definite article in accusative case is D and this same definite article will be used as a relative pronoun to start a relative sentence if we are referring to a noun uh, that is feminine. If the noun is neuter, then the definite article in accusative case is thus and this thus will be used as a relative pronoun. If the noun is plural then the definite article in accusative case is D and this will be used as a relative pronoun. Now let's look at the sentence structure of relative sentences. Relative sentence is a form of Nebensatz and in case of Nebensatz we know that uh, there is always a main sentence I have kept the sentence structure of main sentence simple. So it starts with a subject. Verb will come at the second position which will be conjugated according to the subject of the sentence. And then uh, we may have object, we may have preposition, we may have an adjective, etc. Then we put a comma and give a space. After that we start the relative sentence and relative sentence will start with the relative pronoun. So depending on the gender of the noun, we may have to start the relative sentence with a relative pronoun. Den, if the noun is masculine, if the noun is feminine, then we will use relative pronoun D. If the noun that we are referring to is neuter, then we have to use the relative pronoun thus. And if the noun that we are referring to is plural, then we will use the relative pronoun D. Soon after that, we have to put the subject of the sentence. Then we have to use next part of the sentence or we have to provide further information about uh, that sentence. And the verb will come at the last position of the sentence in the relative sentence. So next uh, option can be that uh, in the neighbor's arts or in the relative sentence, we use perfect tense which means that we have to use participles y form at the second last position of the sentence and we have to use sein or haben verb at the last position of the sentence and we have to conjugate it according to the subject of nebensatz and the nebensatz will be relative sentence. I am keeping the sentence structure of main sentence same that it starts with subject, then comes verb, and then comes object. But in the relative sentence, because this is the focus of our lesson today, I am giving you the options and uh, variations that we may have. So the last variation I have is that in the relative sentence, you may use a model verb. So in that case, we will again start the relative sentence with the relative pronoun. Depending on the gender of the noun, the relative pronoun can be den, d, thus, or d. Then we have to put the subject of the sentence, subject of the relative sentence. Then we put some further information about uh, the object or the subject. Then comes verb at the last position of the sentence and the verb will be in the infinitive form because we are using 
the model verb if we have to use the model verb so if model verb is used in the relative sentence we have to put it this model verb at the last position of the sentence and we have to conjugate it according to the subject of the sentence and whenever we use model verb then we know that we have to use the main verb in infinitive form and that main verb in infinitive form will come at the second last position of the sentence so let's look at some examples now lisa sucht einen job lisa is searching for a job den sie auch als rentnerin machen kann that she can also do as a retired person now if we look at the main sentence structure it's lisa sucht einen job so lisa is the subject of sentence it comes at the first position at second position suchen becomes sucht for third person singular lisa then we use the object of the sentence which is einen job now job is the masculine noun and for masculine noun indefinite article for a masculine noun in accusative case is einen so we have used einen job then we put a comma and give a space after that we start the relative sentence now relative sentence starts with a relative pronoun in this sentence we are referring to a masculine noun job therefore we have to put the masculine definite article in accusative case as a relative pronoun which is den soon after den we are using the subject of sentence which is z now this z is referring to lisa then comes next part of the sentence and in this sentence we are using a modal verb so modal verb will be used at the last position of the sentence and it will be conjugated according to the subject of sentence and whenever we use modal verb then we have to put main verb at the second last position and we have to use it in the infinitive form so this is what we have done here that we have followed the same sentence structure that we have learned in the previous slide next example das ist eine arbeit it's a work die ich gern mache that i do gladly now in this sentence again das ist eine arbeit die ich gern mache that i gladly do now in this sentence i am doing the work so work is something on which i am performing some action so work is the object of the sentence and for object of sentence uh, is always accusative so i have to check that what is the gender of arbeit the gender of arbeit is feminine so i will use the definite article for feminine noun arbeit from accusative case why i am using accusative because the arbeit in relative sentence is used as the object of the sentence and object of sentence is always accusative so after relative pronoun d i will put the subject of sentence which is ish and then i Uh, use the next part of the sentence which can be any information here it is gern which means gladly and mache is the verb that is conjugated according to the subject and comes at the last position of the sentence wo ist das auto where is that car das er kaufen möchte that he wants to buy now wo ist das auto where is the car that he wants to buy or he would like to buy car is being purchased or bought therefore this is the object of sentence and for object of sentence we have to use accusative definite article as a relative pronoun and we have to start the relative sentence with that so for auto is a neuter noun and the accusative definite article for a neuter noun is das then comes the subject of sentence which is er now in this sentence we are using again a modal verb möchten therefore at the second last position we have to put main verb in infinitive form so kaufen remains kaufen and the modal verb at last position will be conjugated according to the subject er and it becomes möchte 
here is in the formulare, here are the forms, die du ausfüllen musst, that you have to fill out. So formulare is a plural noun and because in the Nebensatz we are saying you have to fill these forms, so these forms are the object of the sentence. Therefore, we have to use definite article for a plural noun from accusative case, which is D. And soon after that, we have to use subject of sentence. And here again, we are using model verb. So we will conjugate model verb and uh, put it at the last position of the sentence. And the infinitive form of verb will come at the second last position of the Nebensatz. Das ist der Computer. This is the computer den er gestern benutzt hat. That he used yesterday. Now, in this Nebensatz, we are referring to computer and computer is a masculine noun. In the Nebensatz, this computer is used as the object of the sentence. And for object of sentence, we are using the accusative case because object of sentence is always accusative. Therefore, we have used the definite article for a masculine noun computer and we have put it at the start position of the Nebensatz, so which is den. Soon after the relative pronoun, we are using the subject of sentence, which is er, then comes uh, further information, which is gestern, which mean um, yesterday. And in this sentence, we are using participle swai form of benutzen, which is benutzt. Since this sentence is a perfect sentence, therefore we have to use haben or sein. For this type of sentence, we have to use haben and we have to conjugate it according to the subject of the sentence, which is er, and haben becomes hat if the subject of sentence is er. We heist der film. What is the name of film? Den wir heute gesehen haben. That we have seen today. Now, film is a masculine noun. And in the Nebensatz, this film is used as the object of the sentence. Because it was seen, someone, we have performed action on this. We have seen it. Therefore, it is the object of sentence. And for masculine noun, film, the definite article, is den in accusative case. So we will use this definite article as a relative pronoun and we will start the relative sentence with this relative pronoun den. After that, we use the subject of sentence, which is wir, because we are performing some action. Therefore, we are the subject of sentence and subject of sentence is nominative. So wir. Then we have put further information, which is heute, which means today. And this sentence is again uh, perfect tense, which means that we have to use the participle swai form of sehen, which is gesehen. And we have to use haben or sein at the last position of the sentence. And we have to conjugate it according to the subject of sentence. So haben, if we conjugate it according to where subject remains haben, uh, and this is a question, therefore we have put a question mark at the end of the sentence. I hope this is clear to you now with these examples. Now we have completed the topic of relative sentence at A2 level. If you have any questions regarding this uh, lesson or any other lesson, you can simply put your questions under the comment section of that video or that lesson and I will answer these. Thank you very much for watching the video and see you in the next lesson. Bye.